Hey. <laughs> hey everyone, Ryan Bolton here, local mortgage expert, ryanbolton.com. Today we're answering more questions and love to answer yours. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please put it in the comments below. But let's see how many questions we can get through today. The first one right here is, a, I think, a pretty good one and very relevant to what's happening in our market today. It says, when purchasing your home, what are the benefits and drawbacks of getting a 30-year fixed versus an adjustable rate mortgage? Now, this is getting more popular because adjustable rate mortgages are typically cheaper than a 30-year fixed, but they're only locked in for a certain amount of time. I would say the most common one is a five-year arm, so it's fixed for the first 60 payments or five years. Now, I've seen some as short as three years and go to seven or 10 years, but I'd say the five years seems to be priced out the best and seems to be kind of the magic number that makes most sense for people that are looking at an adjustable rate mortgage. So how an adjustable rate mortgage works is it's locked in for the first five years as the start rate. So kind of like an introductory rate, then after that has the ability to adjust. Now, keep in mind that adjustment is capped. There's only a certain amount it can go up on the first adjustment and then any adjustment after that. Also, it typically will have a ceiling where it can't go past a certain amount as well. Most of them are 5%. I've seen six, I've seen four, but the, again, these are the most common ones. It's going to be a five-year fixed. It adjusts once a year after that. It can adjust every six months after that, but it's all spelled out in the note. So definitely talk to your loan officer about that particular adjustable rate mortgage, but most common, you're going to be a five-year fixed rate period up front, then an adjustment once a year after that. Now, adjustable rate mortgage has got a bad name because there was some bad ones that were sold that were way shorter periods or had way bigger caps or indexes that were really high, but many of them wouldn't even adjust. Like when they went through that whole adjustment period, everybody's worried about their rate adjusting. It actually stayed the same. Or if it changed, it changed very little. So it is something to keep in mind. It may not be a dramatic change, but it is up to the market in 60 months or five years. So if you know you're not keeping the home that long, maybe you know you've got kids that are going to graduate or you're only moving to an area for a few years for a job or going to school or something along those lines where you know it's only going to be a three to five year home anyway, and you're going to sell it, that's where the uh, adjustable rate mortgage makes sense. I wouldn't tell people to get an adjustable rate mortgage just thinking they'll go ahead and refi in six years because you don't know what rates are going to be at that time frame. They could be higher or lower at that particular point, And then you're just susceptible to the rate changing every 12 months. But do keep in mind they're capped. They don't just go from say 7% to 50%. You know, they don't have something where they just go all the way to the maximum on the first adjustment. They're capped to only go up a certain amount on each change. So hopefully that helps you. If you have a specific question on adjustable rate mortgages, please put it on the comments below uh, or call me or go onto my website. Right at the top, there's a scheduler there. So you can just pick a spot, a little 30-minute phone call, and I can answer any questions on anything mortgage-related. So I thought that was a pretty good question because adjustable rate mortgages have been getting a little bit more popular because that start rate's a little lower. So it just gives you a, a little bit better payment for the first five or seven years of the loan. All right, let's go into some more questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is age considered when applying for a mortgage or money to purchase a home? So we can look at age to verify your, you, who you are based on your age, make sure it matches, and that you're old enough to sign the contract. After that, no. You can still get a 30-year fixed mortgage if you're 92 years old or get a mortgage if you're 18 years old in one day. So there's actually protections. Age is one of the protected classes other than making sure you're old enough to sign the contract. So that is one caveat. If you're not old enough to sign it, then you're not, then that's one way. It's not discrimination. It's just whether you're considered an adult or not. So the short answer with that, age is not considered other than if you're old enough to sign the contract. Uh, let's see, how far back do mortgage lenders look at late payments? Many of them will continue to look at it, uh, how it affects your credit score, but most have a 12-month a period. They want to see that you haven't had a mortgage late in the last 12 months to determine what type of loan that you would qualify for. They want to see 12 months of clean history. So this has happened a lot where people had loan modifications or maybe lost their job and got behind. What happens a lot of times when you get behind on the mortgage is you can't just catch up that payment you end up having to catch up all the payments. So it could be five or six grand you have to come up with, even if you're able to pay that payment, kind of get it started again, unless you work with the lender. So 
Uh, but the short answer to this question, typically 12 months. There is programs that do require more. There are some programs that do less, but the more standard to get the better interest rates, you want to be at least 12 months of clean mortgage history, especially if you get 60 days late, 90 days late or something like that. They'll want to see uh, at least 12 months. Let's see. How does a mortgage lender compute debt to income ratio, whereas a credit card is 95% paid off? Is the credit line itself included or just what is owed? Uh, really neither. It's the payment. So you could have a $10,000 credit card and the payment's 25 bucks. That's what they're going to go off of. Or vice versa. I've seen times where the payment is the balance on like American Express. They kind of have a weird way they report the credit card balances. So it really has nothing to do with what you owe on the amount or if it's maxed out or if it's at 50% of the limit. It really comes down to what the payment is reported to the credit bureau. Now, if that's wrong, like American Express is notorious for this, where the say the balance is 900 bucks, the payment's 900 bucks. But on the statement, it will typically show 35 bucks or 55 bucks or whatever it is. So it doesn't have as much to do with balance as it do does with the actual minimum payment on the account. Uh, what is the difference between a loan and a mortgage? It really is how it's tied to the property. So there's deeds of trust. The mortgage is just another term for a loan. So loan is just more universal. It's just a loan where a mortgage is more specific because it's tied to a home. Typically, every mortgage is going to have some sort of real estate that is securing the loan. So loan is more of a broad term like automobile. Then you're going to have car and truck. There's still automobiles. They're just different types of automobiles. So a loan is more broad. A mortgage is more specific that it's a real estate loan. Or we're flying through these ones. Let's go. Um, what exactly is in mortgage refinance legal languages? Uh, it's really just another loan. So it's very similar. Almost the, the terminology is almost the same as a purchase loan. It's just how it's underwritten is different, how it's priced out as far as what interest rate it is. So you're going to have better interest rates when it's a purchase loan, then a rate and term refinance, then a cash out refinance. Each one of those tiers has different loan to value, excuse me, different loan to value, different credit requirements, different hits to the interest rate. So um, they're really, as far as the loan itself and how it functions, it's a very, very similar to any other loan. It's just priced out and maybe a little different underwriting guidelines. Let's see. Where do uh, where do people who are foreclosed on live post foreclosure? So a lot of times they end up moving in with family or friends, or they go into a rental situation. So once you go through a foreclosure, there is waiting periods before you're able to do another mortgage loan. Typically, now I have seen times where they're able to work out a seller agreement to where the seller carries the loan for them. You know, there's all kinds of reasons why people go into foreclosure. So there's not just one answer to that particular question. But when it comes to doing a new mortgage, there's typically waiting periods from when the home is foreclosed on until you're able to do another mortgage loan. Da, 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 da. All right. What else we got here? Ooh, long question. How far above the mortgage rate lows do these rates need to rise before the average homeowner is paying double the monthly payment from when they were at the bottom? We're darn close. I mean, rates have basically almost doubled from what they were at the first of the year. So um, we're getting pretty close, but it is amortized over a 30-year period. So having a payment go from 2000 to 4000 would be a huge jump to interest rates. So I don't, I don't see that. I mean, it's definitely when rates have doubled, that doesn't mean your mortgage payment's doubled. It just means it went from three to six, which is double, but it wouldn't double the mortgage payment because it's still amortized over the, over that period of time. So it is something where they'd have to go, with, I mean, ridiculously higher for a mortgage payment to actually double. Plus, you also, on your mortgage payment, you're going to have taxes and insurance, mortgage insurance, uh, HOAs that aren't going to double as well. So maybe one portion of the payment's really going up. The rest aren't maybe nearly as much. So um, that is something where I don't see mortgage payments literally doubling. That'd be, that'd be crazy. All right, let's go. What else we got? Let's go more into this section here. How many houses do realtors sell every year? It's pretty interesting in the real estate agent world, realtors. Um, they will, I, I think the average is three a year. So, but I would say also that 90% of the business is done by about 10% of the agents. 
So it is a very top end heavy industry of who's actually doing most of the business out there. And it's, it's, it, but if you look at the average, if you take every agent that's registered throughout the NAR, just the whole country divided by how many homes are sold, honestly, I think it's somewhere around three a year. It's really around that number because you also have some part-timers. You have people that maybe are semi-retired or just do family and friends and don't necessarily do a bunch of transactions every year. And then you got some guy that's doing 10 a month or 20 a month or something like that. And then sometimes you got teams where you have one owner that that kind of has a bunch of agents under their team, but sometimes the numbers get rolled up into the team numbers and not the individual numbers. So, but I would say that um, if you took it, depending on how you want to look at that question, it's three, it's somewhere around three. Do, 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 do. Aren't the mortgage companies asking for ex excess living labor? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's go into more of this. Uh, what are we, 10 minutes here? Boy, we're flying through this video. So I hope you like the videos. Please like and share, comment on any questions you have, or go to my website, ryanbolton.com, and there's a schedule up there. If you have a specific question you want to answer, uh, I'd love to do that as well for you. Let's see what else we got. I'm trying to find a new category here. So Sorry, I'm trying to find a new one here. I've answered so many of them that they've kind of scrolled onto a new screen. <laughs> All right. Mortgages. Let's see. Can we pay off our home loan with another loan? Yes, that's a refinance. Plain and simple, that's a refinance. It's one loan replacing another loan with new terms, new rates, new, new anything that's involved in the loan. So absolutely, a loan can be used to pay off another loan. It's most commonly known as a refinance. You have a rate and term refinance where you just take the existing balance plus closing costs and just roll it into a new loan. You have a streamline refinance, which basically takes your old approval and carries it forward. This is on FHA loans, VA loans. Uh, typically, this is when you see rates really reduce. You don't really see it when rates go up. And then lastly is the cash out refi, where you're actually pulling out more than what it takes to clear off the liens on the property. So each one of those is a little different loan. But yes, yeah, short answer is you can use another loan to replace your current loan. How many years should it take to pay off a house? Well, if you have a 30-year fix, it's 30 years if you make the minimum payment. But here's honestly what I would say about paying off a house, especially over the last few years. If you've got the rates that were available, there's no reason to pay off that loan if you have any other debts. Pay off everything else because an extra 50 bucks on a car loan, an extra 100 bucks on a Visa or car loan goes way further than a mortgage. So get all the other stuff paid off, then take the money you were paying to those debts and kind of roll it into the mortgage and accelerate its balance. But I see so many times where people will round up their mortgage payment when it would go so much further on their car loan. The next thing I'd also say is max out or increase your savings, retirement accounts, those types of things as well. Again, an extra hundred bucks going into those accounts in 30 years or 20 years or even 10 years goes a lot further than plunking it all to the mortgage. So really, I'm not a big believer in, in getting rid of that debt because you're usually a locked in rate, it's usually lower than any other rate you're gonna get out there. So why not accelerate paying off other debts that hit your cash flow more that can go a lot further by applying the extra money? So I'm not a big believer in accelerating the mortgage payment unless everything else is taken care of. Da, 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 da. Let's see, how much can I overpay on my mortgage? Anything extra that you pay during the month goes right to principal. So be aware of that. A lot of times people will maybe make a double payment or round it up to 500 bucks or something, thinking it goes towards their next month payment, like a car loan. Like sometimes with a car loan, if you start making extra payments, all of a sudden you've made enough extra payments where all of a sudden you don't have a payment due. That it's just basically caught up to the point where you don't have a payment. It doesn't work that way with mortgages. So if you pay a bunch of extra money, it goes right to principal, but your minimum payment is still due. You've just dramatically reduced the term of the loan. But it doesn't mean all of a sudden, oh, they re-amortize it. You've got 28 years left. You just paid 20 grand down, maybe got an inheritance or sold a home or a car or something. It doesn't mean all of a sudden your payment gets readjusted to that. You still have the same minimum payment, but now you just owe less. So more is going to principal faster. So the term is shortening on the back end, not on the front end. So keep that in mind when you pay extra money to a mortgage. Now, some mortgage companies, you can specify and say, hey, I want this to go towards interest or next month's payment. Some mortgage companies allow you to do that. But I'd say most of the time, it's just designed to go right to principal. Uh, 14 minutes. Yeah. 
Which is worse, not being able to get a home loan or not receiving interest on loans? Hmm. Not being able to get a home loan or not receiving interest on loans. I wonder if they're talking about mortgage companies. Not being able to get a loan. Well, they're not receiving interest on loans. I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. What is a reverse mortgage? Why are they banned? Where's a reverse mortgage banned? Oh, that's a new one. Um, reverse mortgage is could be a whole podcast. So maybe I need to do just a, a total show on reverse mortgages because they're they're co- more complicated than they really need to be. A reverse mortgage is simply instead of you paying a payment to lower the balance, the payment's getting added to the loan and goes backwards. So your balance is going up. So basically your equity is making the payment instead of you making the payment. So a forward mortgage or a normal mortgage, you pay the principal and interest, your loan balance starts to go down over an amortized time. Reverse mortgage goes the other way. So instead of making a payment, the balance goes up. So these are for senior citizens, typically uh, 62 years or older. And what it's designed to do is basically tap into all the equity that they have and be allowed them to stay in the home. Usually reverse mortgages loan a very a much lower loan to value, usually 65% or even less of what the home's worth. So even if the balance does go up, it doesn't eat all the equity. Well, let's say the market really goes up or down and suddenly they're upside down on their reverse mortgage. There's insurances that protect the lender and the borrower that that's just covered as part of the reverse mortgage. But they're loaning such a low loan to value that it never has gone upside down, ever. It's never gone to the point where reverse mortgages have gone upside down. Maybe some, I shouldn't say ever, maybe there's a town that had a, you know, some sort of economic disaster or something. There might have been in the history, but they're very, very, very low risk to a lender and very low risk in that sense. So we'll have to do a whole video on reverse mortgages, but it is something where simply a reverse mortgage is where the balance of your payment goes to the, is added to the loan instead of going down when you make your payment. All right, 16 minutes. Can a mortgage loan officer be a realtor? Sometimes. <laughs> you can't be on the same transaction. There's certain states you can. I believe California. I think there's one or two others back east that you can be both on the same transaction, but you can't be a mortgage loan officer and a real estate agent's actively licensed in bowls uh, because they just have regulation. Most states have it. The federal government has it. So short answer, no, you can't be a loan officer, mortgage loan officer, and a realtor at the same time. One has to be inactive. Let's see. Uh, How long after buying a house can I purchase another to use it as a rental? Right? Same day. It's next day. There's a How long after buying a home can I purchase another to use it? As long as you have the down payment, debt ratio qualifies, there is no restriction. Now, if you have more than four finance properties, guidelines start to change. Then from five to seven, once you get past seven, guidelines change again. And then from seven to 10, guidelines get tighter. So each tier of portfolio or a certain number of homes, every tier that you go up, guidelines get tighter, get more strict. So it is something where, and then once you get past 10, you lose out on a lot of lenders. There's some lenders that don't care, but Fannie, Freddie, kind of conventional guidelines. Once you get past 10, financing gets a lot tougher on owning that many more. Now you can own more. You have a bunch that are free and clear. You can own more than 10. It's just whether they're financed or not. That determines the cap on that. But zero to four, you're fine. That's when it's normal guidelines. Five to seven is a different set. Seven to 10 is a different set. All right, let's see if we can do one more. This is probably the most I've answered in one video. This is, we're going shotgun here. So you might have to slow down the speed because I can get talking fast. Let's go. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. How can you find an assumable mortgage? Uh, FHA is assumable. So what this is, I think this is going to get pretty popular because people bought their mortgages with FHA two or three years ago or even six months ago and they got a 3% rate or a 4% rate, they can actually sell the property with the mortgage with it. The loan can be assumable. So you can just take over that loan and not have to do a new loan, take over the rates and terms. But that's pretty much the only loan that's assumable. Now, I know some credit unions, banks might have some internal products that are assumable, but it's very, very, very rare right now because everything's securitized. Everything has changed the way mortgage money works. But FHA loans are assumable. So that answers that one. Let's see. Can two brothers get a home loan? Can two brothers get a home loan? Yes. So you can have husband and wife on an application or two brothers, a sister and a sister, brother and a sister, four brothers, four sisters. Yes. 
You can have as many borrowers on a file as you want. So it, it just depends on how you get out of the property and who sells it afterwards. But short answer, I had one time I had six borrowers on one application, like one file to buy a home with six different borrowers. So there isn't, that's pretty rare. Usually it's two, you know, I would say is most common one or two, but um, you can do three or four, but yeah, two brothers. Absolutely. You can have two brothers buy a home together. No problem at all. All right. Let's see one more. Let's see. Can an FHA loan used to finance a home purchase at auction? Yes, you can use an FHA loan for that. But typically, if it's at auction and gotten that far down the road, it's usually not in a condition to where FHA will allow for it. And typically at auction, you have to have the money available much, much faster than an FHA loan. So you can, but it'd be really tough, not because FHA wouldn't allow it, because time frame wouldn't allow it you know, or just having the money ready quick enough and having the home in a, in a financeable condition for FHA. So if the, it needs a new roof or there's damage all over the property or the electrician, like, you know, stuff's falling out of the ceilings. And so it, it depends on the condition of the home. So usually when it gets to that stage, it's not in a financeable state in the first place. So you usually have to get either private money or save up enough money to pay cash for it, then get it in a condition where you can refinance it or sell it after that. So I don't think I've ever seen anybody be able to do it, but it's not because FHA loans say no. It's because your time frame just says no. All right. 20 minutes, just over 20 minutes. Nailed as many questions as possible. So I hope you enjoy the videos I'm putting out. Love to have your comments, questions, concerns, other topics we can be doing. We do a podcast every Tuesday. I've got how-to videos, got all kinds of different videos coming up with new ones all the time, but I'm really having some fun with this. So I hope you're I hope you're having fun as well. And if you need a mortgage loan in Utah or Nevada, that's where I'm licensed, but I'd answer any questions you have. I've been doing this since 1999. I have no problems answering any questions you might have. Um, obviously, there might be some state-specific things I may not know about lien positions in Mississippi or something like that, but I'd love to answer your questions. That's really a fun part of the job is to be able to find a solution for questions you might have. But I'd love to earn your business if you're looking for a mortgage loan to buy, refinance in Utah or Nevada. So check out my website, ryanbolt.com, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.